Welcome back to day four of the challenge. So we're gonna to continue to learn some new principles of movement, but also we have a new philosophy principle. We've been learning about ahimsa, nonviolence in the yamas, and today we're gonna to learn about practicing truthfulness, um, not lying. So this is an important concept because it frees us up from worry. When we're practicing being truthful with ourselves and with others, we don't have to about, like, worry about covering our tracks or if like what I said to one person or something like that. So it frees up the mind. And so a lot of these principles, the don'ts, like you might feel like oh, all these like rules about like what I can't do. These are really guidelines to help to give you freedom so that you're, you're free from like the stress of improper living. So practicing truthfulness, that's gonna be a reminder for our yoga principle today. So we're gonna to begin today in child's pose. Uh, let your hips release back and down onto your heels and let the hips lengthen away from the ribs as you breathe space from the sides of your ribs and reach to your arms. So like not only are you letting yourself ground down, but you're also breathing the spine longer. And just feel that as you relax here. So this is your time to shift gears, to shift your focus, your energy, your intention. You're going inward so that you can learn from your practice, so you come out like on the, difference, on, a, on the other side being a different person. As you inhale, come up onto your hands and your knees. And go right into the rounded back part of cat cow. Round your back, look back at your navel. As you inhale, arch your back, wheel your chest. And do that two more times with your breath. Exhale to round. Inhale to arch. And just one more time now. Good, then hold in neutral. And we're gonna do kind of like a real basic, but kind of weird warm up. Um, so as you, just we'll just try it out. Stretch back into child's pose. Jake doesn't even know what's happening, so we'll just See if he can fall, I think he's gonna be good with it. And then from child's, come back up on the hands and knees, lower your chest in between your hands and slide right into cobra position. Good, just like that. So we learned in cobra that we should turn the pinky toe side of the foot down towards the floor, so the inner thighs turn up. The hips lengthen out of the back. And then the sides of the chest reach forward towards the front wall. As you spread across your collarbones, you're training your back muscles to turn on, so you feel the shoulder blades come on to the back. Good, then from there, lower your chest back down to the floor. Come back up onto hands and knees, and then stretch back into child's pose. Good, again, inhale, come back up onto hands and knees. Lower down onto your belly. Inhale into cobra. Exhale, lower your chest down, push back up into child's pose. Good, then come up onto hands and knees and stretch back into downward facing dog. All right, now you've been doing the challenge for a few days now, and I just wanna show you a modification. If down dog, if this is a little too much, like if you feel like your spine won't lengthen here, then I want you to bend your knees as much as you need to to get this part of your spine to really lengthen, to get that inverted V shape. Stretch down evenly through your hands, especially your middle three knuckles. Turn from your triceps down towards the floor and feel a spread across the back of your neck. So it can be done with knees bent like this. Now if there's any issues in your wrist or your shoulder, I just wanna show you one other modification. Set your knees all the way down onto the floor, keeping your toes curled under. Just walk your hands forward towards the front of the mat a little. And this can be like a really good, this can be a replacement for downward dog where you're still getting the feeling of stretch in your shoulders, you're getting a stretch for your toes, and you're starting to warm up your spine muscles. Okay, let's come back to the classic down dog now. Stretch back. Good. Okay, now we're gonna do kind of like a fun little warm up with legs swinging from down dog. Fancy. All right, so find that steady position in your shoulders. Then raise your right leg up from the inner thigh, but stay even on your hands. Hips stay even, hands stay even. As you exhale, shift into plank and pull your knee up to your chest. 
Inhale, reach back to three-legged dog. Exhale, bring your knee to your right elbow. Inhale, reach back to three-legged dog. Exhale, bring your knee to your left elbow, pull it up. Inhale, reach back to three-legged dog. Lower your leg down and change legs. Inhale, your left leg up from the inner thigh. Stay even on the hands, keep these hips nice and level. Exhale, bring knee to chest, pull it up. Inhale, reach back to three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to left elbow. Inhale, reach back to three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to right elbow. Inhale, reach back to three-legged dog. Lower your leg down. Then walk your hands all the way back to your feet and fold forward at the back of your mat. Let your head drop. Then put a little bend in your knees so that you can feel the whole back of the spine flex evenly, like we learned yesterday. Keep the knees bent like that. Come up onto your fingertips and reach your chest forward. Make a flat back, Ardha Uttanasana, and feel the whole back of the spine lengthen evenly. Then exhale, fold deeper. One more time, inhale, come up onto your fingertips, elongate, lengthen, exhale, fold. Then bring your hands onto your hips and come all the way up to stand. Good, stand tall up over your feet. Open up through your feet, arms at your side. So as we work up to learning Surya Namaskar, we're gonna do a little exercise that will help to teach us strength and stability in our core that we'll need for Surya Namaskar. So as you inhale, raise your arms up to the ceiling. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up onto your fingertips and make a flat back. Then one handprint at a time, walk yourself out into plank, but try not to let yourself wiggle from side to side as you walk out. Then hold in that plank there. Good. Root down through your big toe mound, second toe mound, lift the inner thighs. Now raise your right leg one inch without the hips twisting. What this is doing is strengthening your back muscles to prepare you for chaturanga. Change legs, lift the left leg one inch. You're keeping the shoulder blades on the back and the collarbones and the tops of the blades broad. Then lower that foot down, lift your hips up, stretch back to dog, and walk your hands one handprint at a time all the way back to your feet. Inhale, flat back, elongate your spine. Exhale, fold deeper. Remember, you can bend the knees as much as you need to in both the flat back and the forward fold. Press into your feet with your strong legs, come all the way up, raise your arms. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Walk your hands out one hand print at a time. Hold there in your plank pose. Now we'll start with the left leg. Raise that right left leg one inch without anything twisting. Feel your strong back muscles. Hold your blades onto your back out of your neck. Change legs. Raise the right leg one inch. Press through the hands evenly. Set that foot down. Lift the hips and stretch back to down dog. Good, then walk your hands one hand print at a time. Try not to let the hips wiggle. Inhale, flat back. Lengthen yourself out. Exhale, fold deeper. Last one, press into your feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Raise your arms up. Exhale, the hands to your heart. Inhale, raise your arms. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, lengthen. Walk it out one handprint at a time. Hold there in that plank. Now raise your right leg one inch. Okay, now this is gonna be really tricky. Without rounding your back, keep those blades on your back. Bring your right knee up without rounding, knee to chest. Ooh, strong core, strong in your arms. Stretch that leg back and change legs. Lift the left leg up, just one inch. 
Then bring your knee up. Stretch the leg back. Good, lift your hips and reach back to down dog. Walk your hands all the way back to your feet, one handprint at a time. Inhale, flat back, elongate your spine. Exhale, fold deeper. Press down through your feet, inhale, come all the way up to stand. Exhale, the hands to your heart. Good, let's do our three basic standing pose we've been practicing. Turn to the side and separate your feet wide apart. Spread your arms out. This pose is called Utita Hasta Padasana, means extended hands and feet pose. So in this pose, bring your pelvis back in line with your ankles, your shoulders, and your head. So just like in mountain, that same alignment we're trying to find with the ankles. Breathe through your nose and keep breathing all the way down into your belly. Then turn your left toes in a little bit and turn your right leg all the way out for warrior two. Bend your knee right over your ankle, but keep that upright quality through your spine. Hold here for just five breaths. Then bring your right elbow to your thigh and take your left arm overhead. Modified extended side angle. So the action, the gross action we've been practicing is releasing both hips out of the back towards the back heel and stretching the ribs away from the hips. Basic gross action in the body, but very important that you can get it so you can elongate the spine. As we approach week two, I'm going to start to introduce subtle actions as we deepen our understanding of philosophy. Rotate the left tricep, reach past your fingers. Then come back up, warrior two. Straighten your right leg and turn that right thigh so that the center of your thigh bone is pointing the same direction as your foot. Then reach out and put your right hand down onto your block. Good, let both hips stretch out of your lower back in the same direction as your tail towards your back leg as you lengthen through your side ribs away from the hips. Stay connected to your breath. Your breath is gonna teach you, as our lesson from the initial videos, about ahimsa, nonviolence. If you're holding your breath, it's more than likely that you're straining or overdoing. So work in the pose without holding your breath. Just practice that truthfulness, what you can and what you can't do. No worries, come back up to stand. Turn your feet to the other side for warrior two. The right foot turns in a little, left leg turns all the way out. Bend your knee. And as you hold here, there's effort. Every time you do the pose, that left thigh, there's effort to turn that left thigh out. No matter how, I wish, like after like three years, you could stop having to think about it, but it stays like that. Okay, from here, put your left elbow down onto your leg and take your right arm all the way over. Yeah, good, that left thigh turns out, the hips stretch evenly out of the back and the ribs elongate. Okay, now here's another one that the body, I always have to remind my body to do it, no matter how many times I do it, is to rotate this top arm like we have been doing in down dog. The inner arm spins back, the tricep spins forward and down, and that'll help to free up your neck there. The bone plugs back into the socket as the muscles stretch long, just like we learned. So keep integrating what you learn to build the solid foundation. Come back up, warrior two. Then straighten your left leg and make sure that this thigh is turned as you go ahead and tip the pelvis out over your leg, tip from the rim of the pelvis and place the hand down. Nice job. Feel your feet open up, grow the feet into the mat, like roots trying to expand, stretch through the toes. Then grow your trunk longer and your branches. Stretch through the arms, through the fingers. Mm. 
Reach down through your feet. Inhale, come back up to stand. Turn your left toes in so your feet are parallel. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna add a shoulder opener into our prasarita. So clasp your hands behind your back and turn the shoulder blades onto the back. So I have kind of tight shoulders and when I go to do this, it's difficult just for me to get my blades on your back. Is it difficult for you too? Like they kind of want to like round up. So we want to turn those blades onto the back first. Now let me see how far forward you can fold before you start to lose that feeling of the blades staying on the back. And remember, you can always bend the knees a little if you need to. So this is where we're gonna practice truthfulness. Can I, can I have an intention of doing something and then stick with it? Or when it gets hard, do I just say like, eh, I'll just do whatever I can. What happened to those blades? Are you still bringing them onto your back? Are you still breathing? If it's too deep, you back off a little bit. No worries, listen to your body. Great job. Now set your fingertips down onto your mat. Inhale, flat back. Let me see if you can get that total flat back, no matter how much you have to bend the knees. No worries. Exhale, fold deeper, walk the hands back, let your head drop. And then tune into your body. Train your body, train your mind to feel this. Feel the whole back of the spine flex evenly. The places that feel sticky, what do you do? You can bend the knees a little to get the spine to release better. Don't worry, we're gonna work with plenty of straight leg stuff. Eventually, the hamstrings will wanna lengthen all the way, but it might take the whole 30 days. No worries. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, hands onto your hips. Come all the way up to stand. Nice job. Now turn your left foot out and step up to the front of your mat. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, lengthen. Step back into plank pose, one leg at a time. Strengthening exercise for chaturanga. Raise your right leg one inch. Change legs, raise your left leg one inch. Stretch back to downward facing dog. All right, now bring your hands a little closer together on your mat. Step your right foot up to the outside of your right hand. Tap your back knee down for a breath and let both of your hips release out of your back. Then curl your back toes under and start to lift your back knee up Keep stretching both hips straight back as you reach your chest forward. And just feel how much more length you get through your spine. It's kind of cool. So we're teaching the spine health as we're training the legs how to do these standing poses. The higher your back leg lifts, the more your hips will want to twist off. But keep lifting the back thigh as both hips stretch straight back. Change sides. Step your right leg back and bring your left foot up to the outside of your left hand. Tap your back knee down for a moment and let the hips release out of your back. Then curl your back toes and start to lift the back knee up, but keep stretching both hips straight back and you'll feel like the chest gets more expanded when you do it that way. Keep lifting those, that back inner thigh, grow that back leg longer as the left hip stretches back. Okay, now from here, lift your buns up higher, 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 and then step your right foot all the way up to the outside of your right hand. Okay, cool. Then, fold forward, straighten your legs, let your head drop, and then bend the knees. And let me see, keeping your outer heel bones down, see how low you can lower your butt. You might be able to drop it all the way down and then bring your hands to prayer. So for Jacob, this is kind of easy. Like he can just let his butt drop. You might be suffering like with your butt somewhere like this. Ugh. So you can always put a block underneath your buttocks to help. So in this pose, we let the hips sit down. We press the outer heels. We lift the inner ankles like we learned in our squat mobility training. Spread the chest, excuse me, spread the chest open. Okay, now two things are happening as he's holding here. He's letting the back round but he's also taking care in his shoulder girdle not to let his blades creep up into his back. 
he keeps releasing the tops of the blades down and away from each other. And the back gets to spread. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our preparations for crow pose, bakasana. We're learning the foundation of arm balancing. Put your hands down, shoulder distance apart. Now hook those legs way up high by the tops of your triceps. Bend your elbows and keeping all the rounded quality in your back and all that spread through the shoulder blades out of your ears. Tuck your belly into your spine. And then see if you can just lean into your bent elbows and maybe lift one foot up. Keep tucking the belly. Keep the blades out of the neck. And then maybe lift the other foot up if you can. See if you can hold for a couple of breaths. Feel all that heat building. And then set your feet back down. Good, and then fold forward, straighten your legs, let your head drop, great job. Step back to down dog. Okay, this next pose we're using two blocks for Chaturanga Dandasan, strengthening if you already know it, or foundation if you haven't learned it. Shift into plank pose. <clears throat> then lower yourself all the way down onto the blocks. First block goes for the thigh, other block goes for the pelvis. Cool. So Jacob just lowers into perfect chaturanga. He's a great teacher, he's well trained, so he knows how to do it. <clears throat> but for us at home, let's go ahead, lower the chest down towards the floor. With the toes curled under like this, activate the legs. You can see he's pushing through his heels, the inner legs, inner knees are lifted. Okay, then from here, the hands go back under the elbows, and he's just gonna lift his chest right up to block height, like there's another block for the chest. Good. As you reach through your heels, I want you to lengthen through your crown, and can you keep your blades on your back like we've been practicing? So you're strengthening and toning those back muscles. All right, now here's the real test. Could you lift everything just an inch off the blocks at the same height? Oh, why'd your hips sink? Get your hips up. And then lower back down onto the blocks. Woo. Lift up into plank pose. Downward facing dog. All right. So after all that, let's just do a little stretch now on our back. So hop through to seated. Lie down onto your back. And we're gonna do a little supported bridge. So lift your hips up. The block goes right underneath your sacrum. And then grab a hold of the sides of your sticky mat, turn up onto the tops of your shoulders. So like nothing gnarly now, just gonna mellow out. That was pretty challenging. Then bring your feet close together. And without the pelvis twisting at all, stretch your right leg out along the floor. And let the psoas from the inner hip, from your lower back, lengthen all the way through your big toe. As you lift your belly, let the lower back lengthen in both directions. From the front of the inner hip through the big toe, and from the front of the inner hip up to your chest. Rebend your knee, change sides, stretch your left leg out. Rebend your knee, lift your hips up, and move your block off to the side. <clears throat> then lower your hips down and gently hug your right knee into your chest as you stretch your left leg out along the floor. Change legs, hug the left knee in as you stretch the right leg out. Release that leg, Shavasana, course pose. Turn your palms up, let your feet fall open. With your eyes closed, let the body drop into the mat now. Whoever you're still holding tension, just let it drop.
and feel the rhythm of the breath helping to take you inward. Train your focus onto the rhythm of the breath. Just let the thoughts come and go. Then gently bend your knees and roll over to your right side. Press yourself up to seated. All right, so bring your palms together. With your eyes closed, just take a moment to be grateful for the practice today. <clears throat> and for all the benefits that it brings and for taking this time. Just thank yourself for carving out this time to give back. Lower your head towards your heart. Lift your head and open your eyes. Thank you, namaste. All right, so thanks for practicing with us today. Uh, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment below, let me know how the challenge is going for you, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.